Let's say that hypothetically you've been tasked with creating a new course and you're relatively new to teaching or you've been in a profession for maybe 10 or 20 years and you're just entering now the teaching profession and you're not quite sure how to go about creating new course objectives. We all start here at one point or another and this tutorial is just designed to kind of give you an understanding of the basic parameters in which you can create course objectives that are high quality for your students. So the course outline itself uh, gives you a general sense of what you need to do. It says you need six to seven objectives using Bloom's taxonomy and there are some additional parameters here relating to GERs, you know, general education requirements and ISLOs. But really you should speak to your curriculum coordinator or program director about those two issues. Um, and you can do that usually after you create the course objectives. You might have to add an additional objective for GER, which is not a big deal. It's just a copy and paste issue. Um, and then the with the alignment, um, that's usually relatively easy, but it's always good to have someone help you along. In this one, we're just concerned with writing your course objectives, and that's really it. So when you're writing a course objective, you should concern yourself with these six or so items. Uh, the first thing is, especially if you're dealing with a profession of some sort, marketable skills. What marketable skills will the students come away from the course with? Um, and these will usually map to your program outcomes, which you don't really need to know too much about right now. You're just worried about writing course objectives. Um, if you're not in a, a program that's training students for a specific job, um, then you would concern yourself with uh, knowledge that will assist students in other courses, right? Broad skills, perhaps like communication skills or critical thinking skills or something like that. And it's always a good idea to have one of these in there. The good news is broad skills will usually map very effectively and seamlessly to the institutional uh, SLOs that we have, um, but we'll deal with that another time. The other thing is discipline specific skills. So let's say um, you're teaching a natural sciences course or you've been asked to develop a natural sciences course. What kind of elements of the natural sciences uh, will students be walking away with? Those are the kind of things that you want to think about. The fourth one, and this one's really important, is accessibility. Um, are the objectives easy to understand for students? And do they use language that students will only understand after taking the course? And this is a relatively big problem. You want to make sure that students can understand the objectives before they take the course, right? If you start, um, let's say, you know, you're, you're doing a 19th century literature course, and you're in the objectives, you're saying, you know, students will demonstrate the ability to, um, analyze, uh, I don't know, uh, Melville's uh, Moby Dick with uh, an express knowledge of uh, Freud's theory of id, ego, and superego. Students might go, okay, that seems a little bit of an unwieldy task. I don't know if I want to deal with that. So they decide not to take the course. So your whole goal here, generally in the course description, is to sell the course. But the course objectives, I think, have an impact on students uh, deciding whether or not they want to take your course as well. So you want the objectives to be easy to understand and appealing. The next thing you want to worry about is measurability. Can the objectives be comfortably measured? And I'll give you a quick example of that right now. Let's say that you wanted students to demonstrate an understanding of 19th century literature. Well, understanding is somewhat of a vague word. How do they demonstrate that understanding? Some people's immediate answer is, well, the artifact is going to be an essay. That's good, but again, how is the essay going to account for understanding? Is it going to be understanding of the terminology? Is it going to be um, understanding of the, the works of literature within that given time period? How, uh, el you know, elements in history uh, influenced the authors, um, author biographies? Is it going to be that time period relative to the surrounding movements? There's so much that can be accounted for or left out with a word like understanding. Measurability usually requires acute terminology um, that we can really easily gauge. And I'm going to give you some examples of that in just a second here. Okay, But right now, let's jump over to here and we you see here Bloom's taxonomy is suggested. Bloom's taxonomy, and I'll put a link to this in the description, features uh, several categories and they go from somewhat basic, 
right, up here, where you're just being asked to kind of define or describe or duplicate. You're basically being asked to regurgitate information that's been provided to you. Same with summarize and explain and paraphrase. It's kind of moving up the ladder a little bit. When we get to application analysis and synthesis, we're getting into kind of higher order learning issues. Well, typically, it's recommended that maybe knowledge and comprehension, maybe application, are in 100 and maybe 200 level courses. And when you get into analysis, synthesis, and evaluation, we're dealing with 200 to 300 level courses. So let's just say that you've come up with a couple of basic course objectives for your um, course. Okay. Let's copy these things in. That was going to kind of be my a variable one. These aren't perfect. We're going to actually talk about how we can improve these and, and what we can do to kind of try to uh, change them a little bit. But we're going to paste them in right now. Okay. All right. Okay. So we've got three here. Um, demonstrating an understanding of various lenses of analysis. Already we can kind of see a red flag, right? Lenses of analysis. Students might not be familiar with what that means exactly, and I'll teach you how to uh, deal with that in a moment. Uh, research a selected novel and story, right? They avoid a specific reference to a book. Instead, they say a selected novel or story with a corresponding lens of analysis. Now, this is an improvement over the example I gave earlier where I talked about Freud's theory of, you know, id, ego, and superego. Instead, they just talk about a lens of analysis. Um, one thing that you could do um, is change this to um, theory, right? Um, and you could say literary theory, or you could just leave it at theory if you want to. Formulate and develop an argument for the selected novel and story using a corresponding lens of analysis or theory, however you wanted to phrase it. Now, this objective up here isn't absolutely perfect. It's demonstrating an understanding of various lenses of analysis, right? So understanding, again, is a very vague word. There's two potential solutions you can do here. Functionally speaking, this objective does a great job of kind of telling students, hey, don't worry, you're going to learn a little bit about these lenses of analysis before you start mentioning what they're going to do with those lenses of analysis. My recommendation would be one of two things. Either you can get rid of this objective altogether, and you could just mention in your catalog description that students will learn or be exposed to various lenses of analysis. That way students, when they come down to the course objectives, they say, okay, well, I'm going to learn about this in the class, so I don't need to come into the class with a pre-existing knowledge of it. That's one way that you can do it. Um, and I think that's the best way. The other option, of course, is instead of saying demonstrate the understanding, we can go back to Bloom's taxonomy here and say, OK, this is a very basic thing we're dealing with. It's just knowledge, right? Um, define and explain. Let's just say that we do that instead. Define and explain. Uh, various lenses of analysis. OK, that's not too bad. The one problem that someone might identify here We'll just kind of we'll highlight the uh, the Bloom's words and, and we'll uh, italicize them. Is that utilizing two Bloom's terms in a single objective is going to be problematic because then you might have to assess for two different things. So you may just want to say define, um, or you may want to say explain. And notice that explain is also somewhat of <laughs> somewhat of a vague term. So let's just say define, right? Boom. And that's very easy. You give them the term, they define it. You know, you give them the theory and they define it very briefly within the parameters that they're capable of understanding it, and then you're all set to go, right? So that could work potentially. And you could even use this and in the course description say that students will, um, you know, be exposed to or learn about, uh, court, you know, these lenses of analysis, right? So there you go. It's very brief, um, relatively simple. Uh, you just want to, in sum, concern yourself with these issues. And there are you're not always going to hit all of these exactly, right? In some cases, you may have a difficult time with accessibility, right? The objectives use language that students might not fully understand until after they take the course. But you can mitigate that problem. Oh. You can mitigate that problem uh, by changing things in your course uh, description, 
right? Or creating objectives that kind of comfortably prefigure the ones that follow it. So students kind of see a sequence in which the knowledge will, will uh, accumulate and uh, that's very helpful as well. The last thing that you can see on this list that we didn't talk about too much is artifacts for measurability. And what I'm talking about there is you need to make sure that these objectives can be measured. And we've kind of been checking that throughout the course of the uh, tutorial here, right? Um, we know that students can easily define various lenses of analysis. Um, that could just be a basic vocabulary sheet. It's really a lower order concern. Uh, researching a selected novel and story with corresponding lens of analysis and formulating and developing an argument. These two can be taken care of typically with um, a, an artifact, a student artifact of some sort, usually an essay, right? And if they formulate and develop an argument for the selected novel or story using a corresponding lens of analysis, and it's a good argument, right, then the research is more implied. So having a research component implied through the research essay is perfectly fine um, other people might suggest and this is what I do in my English 101 course I have a separate artifact uh, that students uh, fill out that shows that they're researching and engaging with the material that they're researching before they integrate it into their essay right so you have to start thinking about how you're gonna parse this out uh, before you uh, begin developing your assignments because it is the assignments are going to inevitably lead to um, student artifacts that are used for assessment purposes down the road. Okay, I think that should take care of most of the minor uh, issues associated with course objective creation. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always contact me. Uh, thank you very much for your time, folks.